So when I'm doing live streams, one of the same questions I get asked a lot is, can I explain JavaScript closure? So I'm gonna to try to do that in a video and hopefully this makes sense for you all. If you go up and try to read about closures, some of the, the terminology can be kind of confusing. So let's just try to talk about this as easy as possible with an example. So let's assume that you have, for some reason, a use case or a feature where you need to increment a counter in your code. So let's just go ahead and declare a count variable here. And we're going to make a function called like increment counter. And in order to increment this count variable, we're just going to do count plus plus and then return the value of count here. All right, and let's just go ahead and call it like three times. All of this should hopefully make sense. Like we know how to already declare functions in JavaScript. We know how to declare variables and we know how to call functions. But after you call this function three times, you should be able to console log out this count variable. All right, so let's just go ahead and run this in the debugger and verify that down here in the debugger, we get back three. Okay, so everything's working as you think it should. Um, so the issue with this is that you can only have one counter at the same time, right? So this is kind of like a global variable in a sense because every function that you declare inside of this file has access to this count variable due to how scoping works in JavaScript. So if any of these concepts are already kind of tripping you up, maybe go back and learn about scoping. But in a sense, these curly braces, anything that is being ran inside these curly braces has access to parent scope. So this is like the whole parent scope of the file. And these curly braces are kind of scoped using something called lexical scoping. But all in all, let's just, again, look at this example. What are we trying to do? The issue with this example is you can only have one counter. So if I wanted to have like two counters on a page, I can't achieve that because now there's like one count variable and there's no way to differentiate between which count variable I want to increment every time I call a function. So with all that being said, here you can actually use something called closures to basically make this count variable private and make it only used for this one function when we call it. So we're gonna probably bring in a couple of more advanced concepts here, so pay attention. First of all, to make this a function that's kind of closed over this variable, you simply have to go up here, and I can make another function called like get counter. Doesn't really matter what you name it, but the main key is that when you put a function that returns a function, so I'm gonna go ahead and return a function here, the fact that we're declaring a function inside of these brackets means that everything that's inside of these brackets, like all the functionality that you write, still has access to the parent scope of count, right? This is a closure. When this function is closed, it has access to all of the variables declared inside of the parent counter. So the benefit to that is we can basically have multiple counters now. If I were to go ahead and delete all this code down here, let's say const counter A, is equal to get counter, and I'm gonna do counter B is equal to get counter. So now what we can do is we can increment these counters separately. So I can say counter A, call it again, and then I'm also gonna do a console log on that so we can see what's going on. But then I can also increment counter B separately. So you notice I incremented counter A twice, which means that A should be two. And then I also incremented counter B one. So if I run this code, we should get back a count of two and a count of one. So let me just go ahead and console log some extra strings so this is more clear what's going on. Go ahead and run that again. We see that A is equal to two and B is equal to one. So again, what's going on here? Well, basically we have something called like a factory function, which happens to be something called a higher order function. So a higher order function in JavaScript is basically a function that either takes in another function as an argument or a function that returns another function as um, its return statement. Um, and basically we call this a factory function. There might be another term for it, but anytime a function is returning a function, you can call it like a factory. You call it to get another function. But the main benefit is that this is using the power of closures to make this count variable private so that both counter A and counter B have like a private count variable that they can increment separately. And then secondly, this is private, so there's no way to actually access this count variable unless you call this function and try to get it back. So if I didn't return this count, there's no way to know what count is other than like putting a debugger in something. 
So it's really beneficial to understand how closures work because I think if you can explain closures, that means that you know a lot about JavaScript. That means you know how to declare functions, you know how to declare variables, you know how to have functions return functions, which means you know about higher order functions, and then you know how lexical scoping works in JavaScript where you can make private variables that are scoped to the functions that we're declaring inside the curly braces. And there's a lot of other you know, good use cases for this and they'll pop up in your career if you keep on using JavaScript. But just keep this in mind. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and also leave me a comment below if you have used closures in your day-to-day -day JavaScript journey. Um, I've used this a couple of times. It's not like it pops up all the time, but it is kind of important to understand and be able to explain because it kind of shows that you know what you're talking about. And then like always, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something from it because I'm going to have other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better JavaScript or web developer.